trying something a little different today. Before I get into this list, I'd like to explain something real fast. It's a thought process of what you think is the best and what you like the best. Example being, I personally think Led Zeppelin is the greatest band of all time. However, they do not have my favorite song of all time, nor are they my favorite band. My favorite band is actually a tie between Styx and Megadeth, depending on my mood of the day. So do either of them have my favorite song? Nope, that belongs to December from Collective Soul. Do I feel like it's the greatest song of all time? No. No, I do not. I think you get what I'm getting at. By the way, best song of all time is Stairway to Heaven. Going back to Zen. With all that exposition, which comes into play here on this list, here's my personal rankings of my least favorite Megadeth album to my favorite Megadeth album. I'm sure y'all know where this starts. Surprise! It's not Risk. Now, a disclaimer. I like all Megadeth albums, but this one is my least favorite. It came at a point where Dave really lost his mojo and was trying to recover his metalness after Grisk. It suffers from being somewhat boring. Al Petrelli, who I love and sabotage and absolutely love in Transavian Orchestra, had no business being a lead guitarist of Megadeth. He doesn't fit. It comes off as being one of those making an album for the sake of making an album because you have to. That all really would have been solved if they saved Kill the King for this and not put it on the greatest hits of the time. Because that song is one of the best songs to me. I love that song. But it's not. So my favorite song on this album would be When. It's a great tribute to Am I Evil. Now we can talk about Risk. Psych! Now, I know some metal purists are going to be pissed off at me and will likely roast me in the comments for this. But I just never really liked this one. It was a toss up between this one and The World Needs a Hero. This one is overall better to me. Dave was at his druggies when he made this album and it really shows. Production also took a step back from Peace Cells. You'd think I'd pick In My Darkest Hours my favorite song from this album, but if you haven't figured out by now that I don't go by convention, then are you really paying attention? It's hook and mouth. Song is heavy and spelling out freedom as a big middle finger to the PMRC, it's pure poetry. Okay, now we can talk about Risk. A lot of people hate Risk, and rightfully so. I, however, don't. Some context, I grew up with two older female cousins, and every time our family would get together, we'd stay up all night listening to 90s dance and pop songs. So I've always had a soft spot in my heart for pop music. That being said, it does not bug me when a band goes against the norm and you know pushes the boundaries a little bit and experiments, to an extent. This album actually has some pretty slept on songs. Crush Em is a great pump up song. Prince of Darkness, other than the uhs, is a really good one as well. But my favorite song here, and actually one of my personal all time favorite mega songs, is Time the Beginning. It's a beautiful acoustic piece that I love to play and sing whenever I'm just playing my acoustic guitar lying on the house. But a lot of fans never heard this song because a lot of them didn't give this album a chance. At least it's not covered in cow gin. This album contains probably my most hated and the worst song in the entire Megadeth discography, the title track. When I said to an extent, this was that extent. I loathe this song with a passion. As far as the rest, it's solid. Some truly great thrash and 90s groove moments in this one. Some emotional ones too. Forget to Remember comes to mind as one of the you know, heavy hitting, really heavy in the lyrics department. The guest appearance of David Draymond in Dance in the Rain partnered with the old school Killing Is My Business style riff is what makes this song my favorite on the album. Famously known for being rushed by the label to get it out the door. It is filled to the brim with past songs, past demos, reworks of some old songs, complete redos of others, and songs from video games. But that's not a bad thing really. We finally got a full version of New World Order that's fully produced. Black Swan, I think, was better in its original styling on United Abominations. That one, it fits the song better. Never Dead and Sudden Death are from video games, but those two songs are actually incredible. But my favorite song on this album is the completed version of Millennium of the Blind. It was one of my favorite demos from the remastered version of Euthanasia. It's just so damn good. Also, just because they used a riff from that demo in A Thousand Times Goodbye does not mean they weren't afraid to bring it back. Where it belongs. 
best first album of the big four. Don't at me, bro. This album was heavier, faster, thrashier, more attitude, better solos, better hair, better drums, better talent, better song names, better songs that Dave wrote himself. Looking down the cross, that's my favorite. Home to possibly my favorite Megadeth instrumental. Shadow of Death is killer. Too bad My Kingdom wasn't a better follow-up. This album has always held a special place in my heart. It was a return to form for Megadeth, and the Live in Buenos Aires DVD was the first live DVD I actually purchased for myself. And this album was predominantly featured in that concert. That's the show that made me fall in love with Megadeth. Ever since then, it's been one of my most listened to albums. Is it one of their best? No, but it's place in history and my personal history that makes it special. Favorite song is Die Dead Enough. It's a perfect song in my eyes. I feel Endgame doesn't get enough love. The album is fantastic, with one of the best opening sets in their entire repertoire. From start to finish, it's a great listen. No song here really stands out as a classic though, and that's why it finds itself in the middle of the pack. Because from here on out, the rankings get pretty tough. I was going to go with 44 minutes as my favorite song from this album, but after thinking a bit, and after some back and forth, it goes to the right to go insane. This song is a blast to play, especially the second half where it picks up. Only way to play that thing is down picking. Try it. The mid-90s classic. Growing up, I heard Trust all the time on KSGO and The Bone. Little I know back then, they'd become a very band. I didn't even know who they were back then. You know, I was like six. The remaster to me for this one is actually a lot better. They reworked some of the songs and took out kind of the annoying little guitar effects and has the original versions of FFF and Sin, Bullprick and Evil That's Within, respectively. I actually feel like those versions are better than the songs that were released on the album itself. You can hear the transition when Dave was going from metal to kind of the poppier stuff. This album has some solid classics. It still has some thrashy songs. Almost Honest is my pick for this one. The follow-up and the improved sounds on P-Cells. This album is a favorite to a lot of fans. To me, it's number six. Like I said back in Endgame, the top of these rankings are extremely close. If somehow you've never heard this album, you need to go out and change that right now. The riffs and drums of this one are legendary, and Dave was fine-tuning his voice of what he wanted it to be. Good Morning Black Friday is my choice for this one, but The Conjuring is a very close second. A curveball to start off the top five. UA came out in the middle of my high school years, just as I was developing the metalhead I would become. Perfect timing for an album like this. It was a true return to form for them, more so even than System Has Failed, and it's the first album with the Drover Brothers. Beginning to end, it's a fun, high-paced ride. Even a two Mans fast. Burnt Ice is my pick, and I don't feel like it gets enough love as a classic it should be. The Big Four. Euthanasia is probably the most cohesive release in the entire discography. Slow, melodic, and groovy riffs that still grab your attention. This was the most vocally driven album, and Dave's voice was on point in this one. They experimented to great success here. Not much else to say other than that I love this album to death. Favorite song being a Tulemon holds a very, very special and sentimental place in my heart for multiple reasons. Before I get into the top three, I have to say it was a major toss up in the top. Mostly for two and three. I'm pretty confident in my number one. Two and three are interchangeable depending on the day, but there's some factors that I will get into and it's why I have it the way it is. Be prepared to hate me. The greatest thrash album of all time. Highly regarded as Megadeth's best album. And to that, I'd agree. It is. Then why is it number three? I told you my explanation when the intro would come in handy. The musical mastery on display in this one, especially the duo of Dave and Marty, is second to none. It's a flawless album, except for one thing. Dave's voice, not at all times of course, I love the aggressive style he usually has. It's when he goes with the high notes, predominantly shown in Tornado of Souls and Five Magics. It does just no. <laughs> Everyone knows Dave is not the best vocalist. But nobody else could ever sing for Megadeth. It would not sound right. Favorite song on this one, and what I regard as the greatest Megadeth song of all time, Holy Wars, The Punishment Do. The 
the most recent album, My Surprise, at number two. I'll say it up front, I prefer Dave's older, more mature vocals. He has more control in this range, and it fits the lower tune guitars they do now. After the disappointment that Super Collider was, this was another true return to form. And with new guitars Kiko Luero, who is damn good by the way, and Chris Aller providing the drums, it was a recipe for success and it delivered. Start to finish, there is not a down moment here. This album was a return of thrash and the grooves of the 90s albums, perfectly melted together. It's like Dave pulled all the music from all his albums and just made one album to just celebrate it all. Poisonous Shadows is my pick in this one. For the orchestral openings, the melodic chorus, and the really chuggy main riff. Greatness. And that just leaves... My personal uncontested champion of the Megadeth album rankings. This one has it all. Thrash, groove, great vocals, crushing drums, screaming guitars, cryptic and not so cryptic lyrics, and it goes on and on and on and on. This is definitely the album I've revisited more than any of the other ones. And that's because it's not just a masterpiece in metal, it's a masterpiece in music overall. They are at their peak here, and they deliver classic after classic after classic, and it's perfect start to finish. Oh, you wanted a favorite. Well, it's the whole damn thing. I can't pick one. I guess if I really, really had to, it'd be ashes in your mouth. If you have somehow never managed to hear this album, what the hell are you doing? Stop watching this video now, go and listen to it right now. Like, now, now. Thank you for checking out my Megadeth album rankings. Comment below any albums you think I should check out. While you're down there, give me one of these, please. It helps me out. Click up here to check out my review of Carnivore from Body Count. Click up here to see what YouTube picked out for you. They know best. And if you'd be so kind, click right here to subscribe to my channel. And ring that bell to be notified of any of my future videos. Till then, name's David. You can call me Fenrock.